Good morning, teacher, and good morning, everyone. Welcome on you to our presentation today on the topic Gloss as a Message on the subject Systemic Functional Grammar Lecture by the Doctor of Philosophy Duong Đức Minh. I hope that our group presentation uh, will give you more useful information about the topic Gloss as a Message and help you know more clearly about it. Um, there are seven members in my group. We are Trịnh Hồng Nhung, Nguyễn Thị Diễm, Bùi Thanh Hương, uh, Dương Ngọc Hà, Đỗ Thị Ngọc Bích, Đặng Nguyễn Phương Linh, and the last one is Nguyễn Thúy Hằng. Uh, each member in our group will be responsible for each part in on the topic of class as a message, as you can see on the slide. Now move to uh, the part number one team and dream on the topic class as a message by me. My name is Trịnh Hồng Nhung from K6A. Uh, you know, a clause is a unit in which three meanings are combined to produce a single wording. Uh, the meaning that gives the clause is message character thematic structure. Um, according to the course book, uh, we may assume that in all languages, the clause has the character of a message. In English, as in many others, the clause is organized as a message by having a distinct status aside to one part of it. One part of the clause is enunciated as a team. Team is announced by means of a particle. In Japanese, uh, there is a special post-position war, uh, which signifies that whatever immediate precedes it is thematic. Uh, besides, in English or others, um, the team is indicated by a position in the clause. In speaking or writing English, we signal that an item has a thematic status will be put at first. Um, team is the element which serves as the point of departure of the message. Besides, rim is the remainder of the message, the part in which the team is developed. As a message structure, a clause consists of, consists of a team accompanied by a rim. You can see the example text 3.1. The present work is intended to supply with respect to the, to the English language and so on. Uh, the team here is the present work, the present work. Now move to uh, some other examples. Uh, the sentence one, the atmosphere mm. outside is peaceful. Um, you see, the team is the atmosphere outside and the rim is, is peaceful. Uh, the sentence two, for this popular tourist attraction, dress properly and so on. Um, the team here is for this popular tourist attraction, and the dream is dressed properly. The boundary between team and dream is shown by the plus. Um, the team always, uh, yeah, as, as you can see from some example above, the team always starts from the beginning of the gloss. Mm, the speaker or the writer is selecting the desired team. It means that there can be variation in what is chosen as a thematic element in the gloss. Uh, you see the, the example on the table. The duck 
has given my aunt the teapot. The team is a duck and the rim is has given my aunt the teapot. Uh, my aunt has been given the teapot by the duck. The team is my aunt and the rim is has been given the teapot by the duck. Uh, the teapot the duck has given to my aunt. The team is the teapot and the rim is the duck has given to my aunt. Uh, you see, the three Agnet clauses differ just in respect of which nominal group is functioning as team. Now let's study the team rim structure. You see the text 3.4 is a snatch of dialogue from an interview where the second speaker switch from one team to another. Text 3.2 3.4 A. I'm hoping that all financial or domestic considerations has been gone into. B. Yes, we have taken them into into account. Yes, they have. Um, the interviewee feels that the natural team for the response is we. It is after all she and her partner whose, whose actions are the key to providing the information requested. But she then adapts to the thematic structure of the question and switch over to they as team. The team is not necessarily a nominal group. It may be some other class of group or phrase. We have a definition. The team of a clause is the first group or phrase that has some function in the experiential structure of the gloss. The most common type of team is a participant realized by a nominal group, such as as for, uh, with regard to, about. For example, as for Pope John Paul himself, he is known to be very keen on sport. Uh, you can see the team is as for Pope John Paul himself. That's all about um, my part, team and dream on the topic of class as a message. Uh, to continue, my partner uh, Nguyễn Thị Diễm uh, will present about next part. I hope that my presentation uh, will be useful with you. And uh, once again, Thank you so much for your listening. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nguyen Di Ziem, and today I'm very happy to be here to present about the small, small issue of our topic, cause and message. I'm going to present about the group or phrase complex a theme and thematic equated. So here we go, let's get started with my presentation. First one, I would like to talk about the concept of definition. We made two assumptions, that is the theme of the course consists of just one structural element and that element is represented by just one unit, one nominal group, ever pure group, or prepositional phrases. So now let's analyze two examples on the screen here. The first one, the warriors and the carpenter were walking close at hand and on the ground or in the air, small crash leaf and breath, breath, sorry. In the example, the themes are simple because they constitute a, sim a single element in, in the course. So they call simple theme. The second one I would like to talk about the complex as simple. 
A common variant of the elementary pattern is that in which the theme consists of two or more groups of phrases forming a, a single structural element. Any element of course structure may be represented by a complex of two or more groups of phrases. Complex functions as a theme in the nominal way. Such theme still fall within the category of the of the simple theme. You can see on the screen I have some example here. The first one, the warriors and the carpenter were walking close at hand. This the theme is the warriors and the carpenter. Two nominal words joined by hand, such as warriors and carpenter, make up a nominal group complex. This is just one element in the course and therefore constitute a simple theme. Uh, next one, I have another example here. From house to house, I went, by, I went my way. Uh, the two prepositional phrases from house to house similarly make up a prepositional phrase complex. And this is also therefore one simple theme. The third one I would like to talk about the is the thematic equality. With respect to clause, it could be said that a nominal clause or definite definite relative clause are thematic equative clauses because they establish the theme at right at at rim structures. Um, where theme equal rim, the elements of this clause are organized into two constituents linked by the relationship of identify expressed by the verb be here. Uh, for example, I have two examples here. What the Duke gave my gave to my aunt was that teapot. And the second one, the one who gave my aunt that teapot was the Duke. So the theme is what in this example here is what the Duke gave my gave to my aunt and and the one who gave my aunt that tea part that's called theme, simple theme. And uh, another part of my presentation is Norman Nominal nominalization. A thematic equality or a pseudo clap is a clause with a thematic nominal nominalization in it and express the theme rim structure so as the theme can consist of any set of elements. It identifies what the theme is and identifies it with the rim. For example, what happened was that the Duke 
give my aunt that tea pot. So what happens here is nominalized dressing. So uh, I have ch I have. Ch all the points that I need to present today. Thank you for listening. Next one, my partner, uh, Miss Gung, so we're gonna keep on our presentation. Thank you very much. Good morning, my lecturer and classmate. My name is Hương and today is my pleasure to be here and present about theme and mood. In my presentation, there are six parts. The first one is general view. The second one are examples of thematic equity. The third one are themes in declarative clauses. Next are themes in interrogative clauses. The fifth is theme in imperative clauses. And the last one is summary. About the general view, you can see here, mood determines the elements typically chosen as theme in English clauses and clauses can be imperative in mood or indicative in mood and indicative in mood can be declarative and interrogative including two types yes no interrogative and wh interrogative There are some examples of thematic equatives. And here is nominalization as theme, and here is nominalization as rim. You can see here the first, the first part of the clause are themes, and the second part of the clause are rims. Here are examples of non thematic equivalent no one their enthusiasm for the job do i are themes and the second part are rim so my question here is how to distinguish unmarked theme and marked theme about unmarked theme there is a typical pattern if a theme is integrated with a subject structure, then it is a unmarked theme. Frequently, this is realized by personal pronoun I. The rest of pronouns you, we, he, she, it, and they. Impersonal pronouns is and there. Other nominal groups and nominalizations. How about marked theme? If a theme isn't subject, it is called marked theme, and it can be adverbial groups, prepositional phrases, or any element functioning as adjunct. We have a view here. The most marked theme in declarative is a complement, a nominal element which could have but has not been selected as subject and that has been foregrounded to theme position. We have two examples. This responsibility we accept wholly or that it could do without. You can see more examples here. The first one is unmarked theme and the second one is marked theme. Unmarked theme is also the subject including Nominal group, pronoun as hat, common or proper nouns as hat, nominalization. In contrast, marked theme include adjunct and complement. Adjunct are adverbial group and preposition of phrase. Complement include nominal group, common or proper noun as hat, nominal group, pronoun as hat, and nominalization more clear examples you can see on the screen and how about the special case a special case of 
semantic structure is that of exclamative, and they normally have a WS element as theme. You can look at the example, how dreadful she shouts. How about themes and interrogative clauses? As you know, the main function of interrogative is to requesting information. The indication of polarity yes, no, or expecting the hero to come back with some piece of information depending on WS question words. And this mechanism has become part of English language system. For example, you can see two sentences. Who wants a glass of white wine? And where did you get that from? So, clearly, theme in W8 interrogative. Meaning, if the WH word is or is part of a nominal group functioning as complement in a prepositional phrase, this nominal group may function same on its own. For example, what in, what shall I man it with, or which house in, which house do they live in. More example you can see here. The theme are who, where, how many hours and how long or why, and rim at the second part of the clause. Here is theme and yes-no interrogative. In a yes-no interrogative, the theme includes the finite operator, but since that is not an element in the experiential structure of the clause, you can see here. Could you eat a whole pocket of Tim Tams or has he got the car park back by the way? And the first word could, has, did, didn't, sure are a theme one and the pronouns after them. You, he, you, he, it, I, they are theme two. So, in both kinds of interrogative clause, the choice of a typical unmarked the thematic pattern is clearly motivated since this pattern has evolved as the means of carrying the basic message of the clause. And, however, marked theme do sometimes occur in interrogative. You can see some example here on the screen. Now, I'm going to talk about theme in imperative clauses. Do you know the basic meaning of imperative? It is to give commands or advice. The subject can be made explicit, but since that is not usual, doing so could render a marked sentence. Curiously enough, the predicator or verb is here the unmarked theme. You can see some examples. Here you have you as a subject, so it is marked. But here, you see, in negative imperative, the unmarked element is don't plus any element, and it brushing a subject renders a marked form. Imperative are the only type of clause where the predicator verb irregularly the unmarked theme. For example, don't agree with me, it is unmarked. Don't you agree with me when you have the pronounced you, it is marked. And here are some examples of theme in imperative clauses. Turn it down, just place a blank CD in the drive. You take the office. While Yen think of smoke shaman, you see here the first word like turn. Just place and click try on you is other theme. So, in conclusion, the question which element of the clause is typically chosen as theme depends on the choice of mood, and the pattern can be summarized as follows. You look at the table and you can see two parts. The first one is mood of clause, and the second one is typical, unmarked or marked theme. You see here, 
declarative, interrogative, yes, no, interrogative, ws, imperative, you, imperative, you and me, and exclamative. If the mood, if the clause is in declarative mood, and the theme is nominal group functioning as subject. If the clause is in interrogative, yes, no mood, the theme is the first word, finite operator of verbal group plus nominal group functioning as subject. If the clause is in interrogative, ws, mood, the theme is nominal group, adverbial group, or prepositional phrase functioning as interrogative, ws, element. And in, if the clause is in imperative, mood and the the clause starts with you then verb functioning as predicator plus preceding don't if negative is the theme and if the clause is in imperative you and me mood less plus preceding don't if negative and if the clause is exclamative mood the theme is nominal group or adverbial group functioning as acclimative ws element so that is all my understanding about theme and mood and hopefully you will have some questions and i'm free to answer your questions and i want to learn something more from you thank you so much for listening my name is Dung Ngoc Ha, and now I will talk about the textual, interpersonal, and topical themes. About the theme, it is the element which comes first in the class. And it has we know that what the class is going to be about. The theme looks backwards, relating the current message to the previous one. And there are three types of th themes. Number one is additional or topical themes. Number two is textual theme. And number three is interpersonal themes. Now we will come to three types of themes. One, additional or topical themes. Themes contain one and only one of these elements. So the theme of the class end with, ends with the first constituent belonging to the category, which is called topical theme. Based on the topical type, themes can be identified as the marked and unmarked one. Now the first is about the unmarked topical themes easily identified as the subjects of the class, found in the form of nominal groups such as pronoun, proper, or common noun as text, and nominalization. For example, Jack and Joe went up the hill. Jack and Joe here is a subject, and it is nominal group. Next year about Marx topical themes found in the form of complement or concomitant adjunct. Uh, for instance, number one, of the hair, Jack and Jill went, and his groin be broken. So let's go about additional or topical themes. Now we come to the second part, textual themes. It is easily found in the first ring of themes. It shows the logical and temporal relationship between what has just been said and what is being said in the current class. The textual themes divide into two types. Number one is continuity. We have someone like, wow, all right? Okay, now anyway, of course. For instance, well, anyway, we're right on time. And the second type is cognitive. We have some word like moreover, furthermore, on the other hand, for example. Moreover, middle junction, the problem is self-esteemly. 
she complied to serve now. Now the next part is about interpersonal themes. This function refers to a strategy to establish and maintain social relationships. So interpersonal themes include three types. The first one is mood adjunct. It is to express the speaker judgment on, on the attitude to the content of the message. We have can have some words like probably, to my mind, please, no double. Other second type is vocative. It is a name or other themes of address used to get attention of the hearer or reaffirm the speaker hearer relationship. We have some personal names like Middle John, Mary, or My Dear, Honey. And the last one is an Verb Operator. It is more set of finite auxiliary verbs constructed in the primary tense or mod modality. So that's all I want to talk to you today about three types of themes. They are texture, interpersonal, and topical themes. Thank you for listening. Good morning, teacher and everyone. I'm looking at me, so now I will continue our presentation. The information unit, given and new. You know, teacher resources to create this core are of two kinds, structural or cohesive. Grammar provides structural unit up to the rank of the clause complex. From there on, semantics provides the other non-structural resources for creating link that work equally within or across sentences. So, they, these are called collectively cohesive. Among structural means, we have two systems, uh, them and information. Them we contribute a message in the form of the them and reason, but the information, which does not belong to the clause but to the information unit, a unit parallel to the clause and the rest of it rank skill. Since it is parallel, it is lang variable and may stand of more than one or less than one clause. In our case, it is called extensive. The information is a tension between what is already known or predictable, what is the new or unpredictable. So therefore, the information unit is made up to function, this new and the given. In the ideal life form, a unit consists of a given element floated by a new one, but this court had to start somewhere. So, sometimes we have initiating elements that are completely new. Also, given elements tend to be a forest, they point to some other element this course, the courses. Um, so, Basically, information unit have a new element and an optional given one. This structure is realized naturally, not rightly. Each information unit is realized as a tool which may be falling, raising, or mixed, and it turned off the whole tense group. In this tense group, Food carries a main pitch movement, which is known as a tonic position. Of the figure that mark the information focus, the tonic food defies the circulation, which is new, and the end of new element. Typically, this is a large functional element of the clause. Therefore, common units are ordered as Given and new. The American position for new is that at the end of the unit, 
but we may also find given after the tonic food, a case that would be called marked information focus. A number of elements in language is inherently given, answered and detected elements, which can only be retrieved to the situation where they appear. They don't normally carry information focus, and when they do, it is contrastive. For example, you can go if you like. I'm not going. Uh, that's all my presentation. I will talk to you. So now my partner will continue. Thank you. Good morning, teacher. My name is Irina Nguyen Phu Lim from K6A. And today I'm going to present two parts of class as message. The first is given new and theme theme. The second is predicated themes. Let's go to the first one given new and theme prim. The information and thematic system are semantically very closely related. Theme correspond with given information and rim with new information. Although they are related but they are not the same thing. Why theme is what I, the speaker, true to take as my point of departure and the given is you, the list, the hearer or the listener, already know about you. So the theme and rim is speaker oriented and given you is hearer oriented. But both are speaker selected. It means that the speaker relies on a rich verbal or nonverbal environment upon which he or she builds up what is to follow. This leads to the universal one-to-one -one relationship of theme given and rim new. So here is a little conversation. In the first sentence, are you coming back into calculation? Theme are you and rim coming back into calculation. Uh, and the theme are you is mean that I want to know about you. And uh, the information um, into calculation cheated at uh, given information. It means the norm back as a new information. It means you have been away. So this sentence means I need explain, explanation why you have been away the norm. Uh, the second sentence, I didn't know I was out. Theme, I didn't know, as interpersonal metaphor in my opinion, and the reason I was out. And the information, out, contrasting with the back, with the back in the first sentence, and it treated as the new information. So the sentence means, in my opinion, I was not away, so you are wrong. The last sentence, I haven't seen you for ages. And theme I, I stick to my perspective and the rim, haven't seen, for, haven't seen you for ages about information, haven't seen, it, it means that so you were out of calculation and for each cheated at given information by referen references reference back to into and the last sentence I haven't seen you for ages the theme I I stick to my perspective and the rim haven't seen you for each about information ha haven't seen uh, it means that so you were out of calculation and for ages Cheated at given by reference back back in back to into calculation with implication along a long period. So the whole sentence means you wasn't where I was, so it's your fault. The next part is predicated themes. Theme predication involves choices regard 
both thematic and informational systems. Any element with a representational function in the clause can be marked off by a predication. Here are some examples. The first one, it could change the study. So it means that the person who started it is trained, not anyone else. The second sentence, it wasn't the job that getting me out. So we can see the reason, the reason getting me down is not, well not the job, uh, it's another reason. And the next, the, the last one, it was eight years ago that you gave up smoking. In this sentence, we can, we can predicate, uh, you are, uh, you continue smoking after it is giving up smoking. This system identifies one element as exclusive at a point in the clause. It relies on the aquatic, but it features some differences as well. The cause of marking parts of the clause is that they become strongly foregrounded information. The mapping of new and theme gives predicated theme this special flavor. Since tonicity is not reflected in writing, predication also has to make better interpre interpretations. For the first instance, John's father wanted him to give up the violin. His teacher persuaded him to continue. In the second sentence, the natural place for the tonic accent is continue which makes the effective contrast between give up and continue. But the second instance, John's father wanted him to give up the violin. It was his teacher who persuaded him to continue. The tonic accent now falls on teacher. The fact that Don continued is taken as given, and the contrast between his teacher's attitude and that of his father. So this is the end of my presentation and my partner will continue. Good morning everyone, I'm Hang. I'm delighted to be here today to tell you about theme in both minors and elliptical clause. My presentation is divided into five parts. The first, I will start with preface. Next, dependent bow clause. Then I will look at the embedded bow clause and minor clause. And finally, let's look at the elliptical clause. First, I'd just like to give you some background information about them in both minors and elliptical clause. On those, we have considered three clause so far. The melodic structures also has its place in dependent structures. Only the speaker has less freedom to choose themes. In the case of subordinate clause, and even more so in interrogatives, occurrences of themes are predetermined. However, if the theme is fixed by Ramos, the next item retains some thematic flowers. Consider if winter comes. This clause so has obligatory fixed them. Thus, winters can be considered the topical thems. The significances of these patterns is remarkable because they are a key to the development of the text. And all the main contributions come from free cross, are the need to be taken account of. Next, let me turn now the pen bow clause. I will divide it into two parts, finite and non-finite. The first about finite. There are structural themes a typical of conjunctions flower by topical themes. For example, I ask us where the pig have wing. 
He left because his work was done. So if the bow clause begins with a WS element, it constitutes the topical term because it has functions in the transitive structures. I ask us why pigs have no wing. Next, about non-finite. The streamers may be similar to finite clause, but many have no structures nor topical themes. In which case, they feature only slims. For example, for that printer to work off your machine to avoid delay. Next, let's look at the next part in bed is about clothes. They function inside normal group, for example, a defining relative. And there are thematic structures equal thus a dependent clause. So thus they are contribution to these causes in minimals. For example, the day the dam broke it. Let's look at Myro's clause. They have no most or transitive structures and are typical codes or writings. For example, Mary. Uh, good night. There are thematic structures in MTs. Okay, finally, I will move on to elliptical clause. It's decided into two parts anaphoric ellipsis and isophoric ellipsis. The first, anaphoric ellipsis, here, part of clause E presupposes from previous utterances, therefore they are similar to minus clause. For example, yes, no, of course. Next, a separate ellipsis. Here there are no presuppositions from previous materials, but from the situation they have a thematic structure, but it consists of prime only. For example, thirsty. Are you thirsty? That's exam text and commentaries. That brings us to the end of my presentation. Thanks for your attention.